Kink. Kiko Tarkin. Kit. 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 Actually, <laughs> Architecture Poraleka Kuritsi, Muloto Poraleka America, Coop Ami Coop Nijeka Coop, a Govan Monocori, Garnet, Jal Teacher Bay Silam, or Bachelor's Degree College of Oregon University, even Pori, Yen University Master's College of Tarak, Sovak, Utonto Nam Kora Teacher Chilin of Gavar Kachuku, Tadir. Dawache consara Giovanni, modern agriculture to type with a simple current look. J. Erocum Balo teacher, Pami, a power of Baguchillo. Both bachelor's degrees are compiled among a university, Rudolph and Rudolph Sangaj Kurit Master's degree. I mean, architecture, a very attacking is the Hitsilam Sitolo, she gets Hilam. সেটা যেমন আমার পড়া লেখা লাগে আমার জ্ঞান শিক্ষা চারি পাশে যা কিছু হচ্ছে নতুন নতুন জিনিস ঘটনা ঘটছে সেগুলো সম্বন্ধে গভীর জ্ঞান প্রয়োজন আছে তারপরে পড়া লেখা করে পড়া লেখা করার সুযোগ খেলাধুলো করার সুযোগ জীবন ভালোভাবে চালনা করা চালনা করার সুযোগ এই সুযোগগুলো আমি মনে করি আমি খুব সৌভাগ্যবান আমার ভাগ্যে এগুলো সব জুড়েছিল কিন্তু এখানে বর্তমানে বাংলাদেশে যে দেখছি বাংলাদেশে আমরা উনিশশো সাতচল্লিশে স্বাধীনতার সঙ্গে করলাম তারপরে স্বাধীনতা যুদ্ধ বলে পাকিস্তানের সঙ্গে যুদ্ধ করে উনিশশো একাত্তরে স্বাধীন হলাম আমার থাকার জায়গা আমার কাজ করার জায়গা আমার কাজ করবার এই প্রসেসের ভিতরে সে লেখাপড়া করার ব্যাপার আমার খেলাধুলো আমার একটা জীবনের টোটালিটি নিয়ে যে চিন্তা ভাবনা এইটা বিদেশে ওরা পড়া লেখায় তখন আমি আমারও আমাকে শিখতে হয়েছে কিন্তু ওখানেও দেখেছি যে সার্বিকভাবে জীবন এইভাবে নিতে পারে না এবং আমাদের দেশে যা ঘটছে ঘটেছে এবং ঘটছে তাতেও ওই টোটালিটি নিয়ে জীবনের যে ব্যাপারটা এটা একটা বড় রকমের গাফিলিটি থেকে যায় জন্মানোর থেকে আরম্ভ করে মরা মৃত্যু পর্যন্ত আমার কাজ কর্ম থা দেওয়া যা সব কিছু যে স্পেস লাগে এই স্পেসগুলো ডিজাইন করার দায়িত্ব আর্কিটেকচার এখানে বিদেশেও খুব কম আর্কিটেকচার এগুলো সব চিন্তা ভাবনা করে করেন তো চেষ্টা বোধ হয় করে আর পড়া লেখা তো কিছু কিছু ভালোই শেখা না তো এখানে একটা জিনিস হয়ে দাঁড়িয়েছে আমাদের দেশে যে সুন্দর বাড়িঘর করবার যে ইচ্ছেটা প্রথমে তার নিজস্ব নিজস্ব থাকতে হয় কিন্তু তারপরে এটাকে সাহায্য করতে করে শিক্ষকরা 
তারা সাহায্য করে যখন যে শিখ আমার কাজে প্র্যাকটিসের ব্যাপারে আমি তখনই আমার জ্ঞানটা এই কাজগুলোতে লাগাই Greetings, I'm Deborah Burke, the Dean of the Yale School of Architecture. It gives me great pleasure to speak on the work of the Bangladeshi architect Muzarul Islam on the centenary of his birth. Muzarul Islam was one of the stalwarts of modern architecture in South Asia, a brilliant architect who shaped a new formal language and an enlightened ethics in architectural practice in Bangladesh. Originally trained as an engineer, Islam did his undergraduate studies in architecture at the University of Oregon and did his graduate work at Yale, where he received a master's of architecture degree in 1961. Following his studies at Yale, he had a highly productive period, designing five polytechnic institutions, several other universities and important cultural institutions, and over 150 residences. His time at Yale was decisive in Islam's prolific career. He studied under Paul Rudolph, Vincent Scully, and listened to talks by Louis Kahn. He befriended Stanley Tigerman, and the two remained lifelong friends. Between 1964 and 1970, Islam brought an international dynamic to the architectural culture of Bangladesh. He was instrumental in Khan's receiving the Commission for the National Capital Complex and Paul Rudolph the Commission for the Agricultural University. All of these remarkable buildings, Islam's work and the work of others, became shining examples of a new modern architecture in Bangladesh, and it helped shape the architectural discourse of the larger region. We at Yale are proud of Musharul Islam's work and his significant architectural impact as an architect, a planner, an educator, and an activist. When I see him in person and connected to what I had heard from Rui Khan, there is a big difference between the two because the image that one has is of a wonderful, powerful, uh, a person who can realize his goals, a strong man. And what I saw him was the most sensitive, almost fragile person, very, very gentle, a noble man. When you look at his work, there is a sensitivity and there is power. There is a desire to do something new and very considerate. A human being who knows gentleness, politeness, and also a man who was full of cultural heritage. And how much we spoke about the architecture, the poetry, literature, art, culture, and we talked at length about how can Bangladesh come back to its own glory rather than succumbing to only Western influences, but to really create an architecture which is much more useful, related, contextual, and uh, aspiring what Bangladesh should be. A man who will talk, listen more, ask, guide you, give you some ideas, tell you what else to do. Now, this is something which is very rare now. আজহার ইসলাম তার স্থাপত্যের ভিতর দিয়ে একটা অত্যন্ত মহান মানুষের যে পরিচয় সেটা উনি রিফ্লেক্ট করতে পেরেছিলেন তিনি বাংলা ভাষাকে খুব ভালোবাসতেন এবং এবং এই যে ভাষা আমাদের দেশ এটা ভালোবাসাটা ওনার আসছিল উনি কিন্তু বাঙালি হতে চেয়েছেন ওনার সঙ্গে আমার আমি তো ওনার সঙ্গে কাজ করেছি উনি কিন্তু ভীষণভাবে বাঙালি হতে চেতেন তিনি এরকম অনেকটা বলতে চাইতেন 
যে আমার পক্ষে তো আমরা তো মুঘল নই আমরা তো ব্রিটিশ হতে পারবো না তা তাহলে আমরা কি আমরা একটা ভালো বাঙালি হই যেটা আমরা হতে পারে যেটা আমরা আসলে তো উনি বাঙালি হতেন এবং শেষের দিকে আমরা দেখেছি শেষের বেশ দুই তিন দশক তিনি কিন্তু একেবারে বিদেশি ড্রেস পরতেনই না পায়জা পাঞ্জাবি পরতেন এটা বাঙালি হওয়ার একটা ভীষণ আগে পোশাকে অতটা চিন্তা করেননি শেষের দিকে আমরা দেখি যে পোশাকে মননে সব দিক থেকে উনি বাঙালি হয়েছিলেন অত্যন্ত আধুনিক ওয়েস্টার্ন এডুকেশন দ্বারা ইনফ্লুয়েন্সড কিন্তু আবার একটা আধুনিক শিক্ষিত বাঙালির যে স্বরূপ সেটা তার জীবন দিয়ে তিনি তার কর্মে এবং তার জীবন তার ব্যবহার তার আচারে আমরা কিন্তু সেটা পাই একটা মহান ব্যক্তিত্বকে পাই প্রধান স্থপতি বা শ্রেষ্ঠ স্থপতি বা প্রথম বিল্ডিং করেছেন তার চেয়ে তো বেশি ব্যাপার আমার কাছে মনে হয় যে তিনি কিন্তু বিশ্বের মধ্যে একটা ভালো কাজ করার চেষ্টা করেছেন উনি কিন্তু ওই যে বাঙালি বলে হীনমন্যতায় আমি একটা কোনো রকম একটা কাজ করলাম সেটা কিন্তু উনি করেন নাই উনি কিন্তু বুঝতে পেরেছিলেন যে বাংলাদেশেও একটা একজন ব্যক্তি একে বিশ্বমানেরই শুধু না একটা এক্সাম্পলারি কাজ করতে পারেন well i have the privilege of knowing uh, architect masrur islam i would say probably from the beginning of the 1960s i think he had uh, come back from the us and he was already uh, launched on his uh, his epic career uh, which has come to influence the whole nature of architecture in bangladesh and my initial encounters with him were not at a professional level uh, i had met him in uh, various uh, functions uh, mostly with progressive groups getting together and uh, when i spoke to him uh, then he those days we used to talk about the political situation it was those days were about martial law uh and we had our own positions on that he knew mine i knew him less well in his political incarnation but while we talked about politics he then introduced me to his ideas on physical planning but then i also attended some of the uh presentations he made on the subject and uh as a economist i mean i was naturally as a person on the left Uh, we were very committed to the idea of planning but his idea of uh, relating what economists thought of as planning to the idea of physical planning which is essentially that uh, whatever processes of planning went on uh, needed to relate to the environment uh, within which uh, the planning and development was taking place this was an idea which impressed me deeply because it helped us to contextualize the idea of the space in which uh, development was to take place the uh, you may say the geographical and environmental context in which this would take place and also the human condition and the habitations around that all were relevant variables this wasn't simply a, a economic exercise where you were dealing with numbers and you were dealing with projects and macroeconomic details this had a very intimate relationship with the whole uh, human condition around you and that concept of planning greatly appealed to me i had such a perspective before i went to bangladesh because stanley had been so um vocal about his relationship and i think that was what really gave me a perspective of the man and uh his desire for the country and that would that to me was really amazing because um i know stanley joined forces and did buildings there and he he his stories of the buildings and his stories of working there during all of the things that were going on uh was pretty amazing and i and i think that you know that gave stanley uh truly a lasting love for uh muz and for the people of bangladesh and i think it was in 1998 uh muz invited us to come to bangladesh and lecture and that was after stanley and i had had really started the archiwork school 
in Chicago. And now that I'm thinking about it and after a lot of sort of going back and looking into history and stuff, uh, I am absolutely certain that Muzz had a huge impact and the Bengali people had a huge impact on uh, Stanley. And when we started the school, I mean, I, our goal really was to provide education, architectural education for uh, and design education for people in need. And that could be any type of need. It could be uh, low income, poverty, it could be handicapped, it could be you name it. Um, so that was sort of the genesis of the school. And every day and every time we started really talking about what we were trying to do, Stanley would bring up his time in Bangladesh, building buildings, watching the war, seeing what was going on, um, and actually understanding it. Very excited about the work that you're doing to celebrate uh, uh, Muzz's, uh, we used to call him Muzz. His uh, life and career as an architect is just uh, outstanding. And uh, I'm very pleased to have met him. Stanley Tigerman and Mazar Islam and I, the three of us, and we were so different. Uh, I was a lot younger than them. And yet, for some reason, we connected in uh, kind of the questions that uh, uh, were going on in our mind about uh, architecture and, uh, and um, the environment that we were designing within and so forth. Often, we would be working in the morning and around 10 o'clock in the morning, uh, Muzara and uh, Stanley Tigerman and I, we also walked across the street to a cafe and had a cup of coffee together. And those little coffee sessions were very uh, important when I look back on our relationship because we would be talking about our backgrounds and our thinking in a way that up in the design studio, we were so busy working on our own individual project that we didn't communicate like we could over a cup of coffee. And um, and I remember uh, uh, Muzara talking about connections to rural uh, environments and uh, and uh, his interest in, in design was uh, so different than anybody I'd ever met before. And he, frankly, was probably the first person from outside of the United States that uh, that I really got to talk to. And uh, for some reason, uh, he liked me and I liked him. And Stanley, the same way, the three of us really kind of connected, even though we were all so different. And um, so it was a, a great experience to uh, be able to uh, communicate and uh and, uh, and I didn't realize it at the time, but then much later in my life, as I started to uh, explore the world and whatnot, uh, Mazzara's uh, uh, thinking about the connections between urban and rural really had an impact on, uh, on my uh, uh, development. To a large degree, they don't often kind of recognize how important rural is. And that's where I thought uh, Mazzara had open up that way of thinking in my mind as I kind of developed uh, as an architect. All of that, because that's what Stanley always called him, were, you know, dear friends from their days at, at Yale. I think because they were both older students, uh, Muzz was even seven years older than Stanley, um, that they bonded together. And I think um, they were also kind of unique characters at that time. Um, and Stanley, of course, had spent a second year, of his first year with Rudolph. So he was um, well in tune with what kind of work had to be accomplished to get your MDES and, at Yale. Um, but they became very close friends there and always talked about if they would ever have a chance to work together. And um, I think at one point, because a lot of the story of their relationship, Stanley wrote in his book called Designing Bridges to Burn. And I would imagine that you found that at the um, Art Institute. So, um, yeah. you know, and I, I kind of reread it again because I wasn't a part of the very early um, time when he 
first traveled to what was then East Pakistan. Um, and Muzz was working on a way to, to get the World Bank to um, sponsor a project for them to do, <clears throat> which was, of course, the five polytechnic institutes. But Stanley's stories of that time, the 10 years that he spent going back and forth to um, what is, of course, now Bangladesh, were it was, I think, probably the most important, uh, significant time he felt in a way in his life. Um, the stories that he told about the country, about uh, Muzz insisting that he, you know, eat the food and, of course, getting sick and then getting well and then realizing that he could eat it all the time and um, how much he enjoyed that. The nights where he was um, in Muzz's home and he'd gathered a number of uh, friends together and they would listen to Ravi Shankar office, you know, over to cocktails somewhere and sort of, you know, just talk about the week and what was going on in the country and things. But they were both revolutionaries in their, their way. And, you know, Stanley's stories about being in um, East Pakistan during the war and the atrocities that he witnessed and, you know, they were both very moral, ethical um, people as well. And I think he's, he's extraordinary mm -hmm. from the point of view of uh, use of materials mm -hmm. and without uh, going into the traditional uh, sort of handicap of imitating anything which was local and regional and whatever. He had his own interpretation with the modernist dialogue. So his buildings are built with a very simple regional materials, but they all are modern. When you look at it, you can see all the uh, tenets or the assets of the modern architecture since Renaissance. You see how he establishes a foundation, how he treats the first floor, how the building develops, and how he sort of finishes it at the top. And uh, that is basically three levels of uh, identifying buildings. And these buildings are timeless, frankly. You know, And uh, uh, now I go very frequently, you know, when I miss Bangladesh and him. And uh, every time I find something original in his architecture. And he's, he's modern. I know Mr. Islam from the, the big state mosque, of King, King Faisal Mosque in... Uh, uh, in Islamabad. He was the uh, member of the jury with Abdullah Quran, and he was uh, very instrumental to identify an extraordinary modern project because he was the most notable architect in the jury because uh, others were historians. I see Mazhar Islam as a visionary architect as well as a revolutionary architect. And both uh, these terms, vision and revelation, are very much applicable to Mazhar Islam when we look at his life, when we look at his work. I mean, uh, since 1953, till uh, his death, I mean, not the exact uh, uh, time of his death, I mean, uh, he became a little uh, unwell uh, before uh, his death. Till the time which is uh, his active life, he pursued architecture, he pursued life in that manner, a manner of a visionary, a manner of a revolutionary. And that is very much evident in the very first two works, Mazul Islam designed and that got built. He started designing these two projects, the art college in Shahbag and also the public library not far from Shahbag, in, both in the Dhaka University campus. These two projects brings in a new way of architectural thinking in the country 
She was the first formally trained architect in Bangladesh and he single-handedly took the responsibility of taking forward architecture, an architecture which was freed from the colonial history, from the colonial past. A, a, a true modern architecture for the country and as well as for the world. You can't have a building without a client, right? And sometimes you have to have somebody looking out for you so that you actually get a job. And I think for Orlu, that first was Mazar al-Islam. You know, I don't think he would have this commission if it weren't for him. Uh, and the story that, you know, that Mazar al-Islam was offered this job in the beginning. And he said, no, no, we must have a great master to do this. I was always very interested in the last days of my father's life and what he was, what he was thinking, what happened on, those last, on that last journey back from India. And it's, it's kind of poignant that the last person he talked to was an architect named Stanley Tigerman. They crossed paths in Heathrow Airport in London. And the last person they talked about, the last conversation they had, was actually about Mazar al-Islam. Although uh, Mazar al-Islam introduced modern architecture in Bangladesh, he impacted our architecture culture in many ways. He opened for us new frontiers by which we can take architecture forward. We all know that Mazar al-Islam was a committed modernist. Despite that, he turned us towards history in a profound way. Through the activities of Chetona in the 1980s, he introduced us to the wondrous architecture of the past, to the depth of our culture and provided us with new inspiration and new motivation for working. That was the first frontier he opened for us. There was a second frontier. The past is of course there, uh, released in a new way. But we have to know the wider world also. We have to bring the world to our own neighborhood. As he used to say, we have to be a Bengali and a world man. And that is why, because of Mazar al-Islam, we have in our, amongst us Louis Kahn, Paul Rudolph, Stanley Tigerman, and the Aga Khan Award for Architecture in its various manifestations. All that lent an international discourse to our architecture. Many architects today are benefiting from that. The third frontier was to bring about a new awareness about the scope of architecture. Architecture does not mean a single building. It involves a larger, wider environment. We need to comprehend that larger context and work with that. I've often described that as the arrangement and the rearrangement of the larger scale. As uh, Islam Shai would say, the vision of the architect should extend to the whole environment, to the city, to the landscape, to the region, to the country. There is a serious obligation involved with working at those scales. I can say personally, this has impacted me most in my own work and thinking. Well, I mean, I was, you told me that Ara died, Mazu's wife, yes. and I was very sorry to hear that, very sorry. She was a very sweet woman uh, who, a long-suffering wife, because being married to Muslim Islam was not exactly easy <laughs> because of his propensity to rant and rave about whatever, because he had opinions about everything. Right. There's right. no subject on which he had no opinion. So, and that was, you know, I think that it was difficult for her because at some level, I think it's fair to say he became ostracized by his own profession at some level. Where the, uh, because he was, how do I say, he was unforgiving. If you were a younger architect in Dhaka, Mr. Islam, was very tough on you. 
if you didn't do something for what he considered his people, the poor people, which is everybody, the Jude worker, and didn't do something behaviorally correct, he was on your case. Well, but it, so you could imagine, it's great for him, and it was great for the people at some level to have him as their standard bearer, which Muslim is meaning the flag bearer of Islam, right? And he sort of was, but not of Islam, the religion, but he was the flag bearer of Bengalis, of people from East Bengal. But the fact of the matter, he had this obligation, and he felt the weight of it on him like anything. And he did that without question. He did that by way of what he, that he became a role model. There is no question. He's the best thing that ever happened to the young generation of architects in Bangladesh was Muslim Islam. Without Muslim Islam, there would have never been a standard that a native-born architect could claim as sufficient to garner the discussion of people around the world. But when he first came back, that wasn't apparent. In other words, his personality grated against people who might otherwise have just appreciated him. Secondly, in the spirit that you're not a poet in your own hometown, I mean, he was too close to them. And so they never really realized that he was this terrific architect. Yes, I mean, Islam suffered. And the end of his life, the last 10 years of his life were crap because he died before they could really express their appreciation of him. Right. Exactly. Thought he was great. He changed my life.